What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here, and we're seeing some major, major news here on gas and diesel prices, which is going to send a lot of things soaring in prices, including maybe food prices, shipping prices, and a lot of things going higher. Take a look here. Saudi Arabia cuts in oil and diesel and oil. You, you get it, right? Sends world diesel prices soaring. European refineries have been starved of both Russian and Middle Eastern crude. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, take a look here. Oil could hit $107 due to Saudi Arabia and Russia's supply cuts. Goldman Sachs warns. Take a listen here. We are tracking a surge in the oil markets. I'm talking prices here. On Monday, prices shot to a three-month high, and the monthly increase is, quite frankly, more dramatic. In July, oil prices saw their sharpest rise since January of 2022. That was before the start of the war in Ukraine, and no relief from OPEC at this point, which is staying the course, keeping supplies tight. Saudi Arabia voluntarily put production cuts in place for July and August, and that is expected to continue. Noah Brenner uh, joins me now. He's the executive editor at Eastern Hemisphere for the energy information company, Energy Intelligence. So let's just start with a very basic question. What is driving this price rise at this point? Sure, Becky. Well, first, mm. it's great to, great to be great here. To I mean, in terms of what's driving this price, it's, it's a tighter market. Um, we're seeing demand pick up. And as you uh, said, you know, we're seeing uh, OPEC essentially keep supplies tight. Mm. Uh, at the same point, we've seen Russia actually make good on its pledge to take 500,000 barrels a day off of exports. Uh, we think they're actually even a little bit above that. Mm. And so we're finally starting to see markets react to, to what we thought might happen, say, earlier in the year. We're talking here about a, a specifically about a when we talk about a, a, a sort of you know a squeeze on supplies. We're talking about a, a Saudi voluntary cuts of a, a million barrels a day in their effort to get the price, as we understand it, above eighty dollars. Because we all, as we understand it, see that as a kind of you know the, the, the break even on on the budget. They've succeeded in that. We are looking at this eighty dollars on the barrel plus plus at this point. Goldman Sachs looking at hundred uh, bucks on the barrel once again, which is interesting. We can talk about that. Have these salaries at this point succeeded in you know what what they were very open about their intention uh, <laughs> to be and what, what can we expect going forward? Well, I mean, we've certainly seen them uh, take strong control of the oil mm. market here. I mean, I think that looking ahead, we've got a, a joint ministerial meeting coming mm. up here on Friday. Um, you know, whether that cut gets continued, certainly the market believes that it will. Uh, at the same point, you know, they need to balance their own budget needs. I mean, every million barrels a day that they're not selling has a financial impact there. Mm. But, you know, should additional volumes come into the market unexpectedly, mm. you know, there, that will have an impact on price. And so it's, it's a balance mm. there. Now, take a look at what we're seeing here. Gas prices could jump as much as $1 in the coming days, according to recent predictions. Yeah, sources tell Fuel App Gas Buddy that a refinery outage could be to blame. And, uh, well, a lot of this is because the heat. We've also seen here that, and this is what the refineries have been saying, at least, that the, the refineries have not been able to produce as much at full efficiency because of the heat. This is what they tell us. I don't know if this is just an excuse or what, but we are seeing headlines like this. The summer was a global record breaker for the highest heat ever measured. We're also seeing here... Earth just had its hottest summer on record, the UN says. Warning, climate breakdown has begun. Texas narrowly avoids blackouts as heat stretches on. In fact, Texas actually just paid a Bitcoin miner $31.7 million to shut down during a heat wave in August. This is how tight Texas and even California is on uh, power. They're, they're, they're so constrained on power 
Texas paid $31.7 million to shut down a Bitcoin miner because there's just not enough power to go around. And this massive Bitcoin miner was using so much power, they would rather pay them $31.7 million. Yeah, figure that one out. California also says that they could power 270,000 homes by installing solar panels along their highways. Um, better get to it because California and Texas are two of the, well, two of the most populated states, but also struggling with uh, power as well. This also comes as Tesla says that they are going to be installing charging stations at up to 2,000 Hiltons in North America. Yeah, Elon Musk says that Tesla plans to install 20,000 electric vehicle charging stations across 2,000 Hilton property, properties in the U.S., Mexico, and Canada beginning next year. The move will help Tesla remove a barrier to adoption and help Hilton re-attract business customers. Yeah, the, the announcement coincides with the beginning of business travel season. This also comes here as Trump vows to end the madness of the EV push. Yeah, Trump said on Truth Social, quote, the great state of Michigan will not have an auto industry anymore if Quote, crooked Joe Biden's crazed concept of all electric cars goes into effect, he wrote in his true social push. China will take it all 100%. United Auto Workers, who right now are pushing for a 46% raise and a 32 hour work week, quote, vote for Trump. Get your leaders to endorse me. I will keep all of these great jobs and bring in many more. Choice in schools and choice in cars. In 2021, Michigan was home to more than 170,000 auto manufacturing jobs, according to a report from a nonprofit research center. While that number is still higher than any other state, the report noted it's also only 37% of the jobs Michigan had at its peak. This also comes as the auto industry switch to electric vehicles gets a $12 billion in loans and grants from the U.S. Energy Department. The U.S. Department of Energy said Thursday it plans to fuel the auto industry's transition to electric vehicles with $12 billion in loans and grants. Hard on the heels of President Joe Biden's goal to spur the sale of EVs in the U.S., the Energy Department will provide $2 billion in grants and $10 billion in loans to support the conversion of U.S. automakers and supplier facilities into manufacturing centers for hybrid and electric vehicles. The program aims to build or refurbish factories in communities with existing auto manufacturing facilities and to bolster the domestic EV supply chain. The funding comes after Biden administration announced earlier this year an ambitious policy proposal that could require electric vehicles to account for two-thirds of new cars sold in the United States by 2032, which is a little bit over eight years away. How they're going to get all that electric energy, I don't know. They're going to have to beef up the grid for sure. But this comes as diesel prices have ro rose dramatically. You can see that column here for diesel. Um, as we talked about diesel going up here, as Saudi Arabia sends world diesel prices soaring. See the headline here from the Wall Street Journal. Um, a month, this is from uh, AAA gas prices. A month ago, diesel prices were $4.20. Now, right now, they're 446. So diesel prices have gone up, uh, what is that, 26 cents here just recently for diesel. And now, 
again, the headline here just now, Saudi sends world diesel prices soaring and prediction that gas prices could jump as much as $1 in the coming days, according to recent predictions. We could see gas and diesel prices going even higher, even higher. So, you know, I think this is the reason why some people want to switch to hybrids or electric. But we've also seen electricity prices spike as well. Did you know that a lot of the reason why electricity prices have spiked is because, the re because of gas and uh, oil prices have spiked as well? A large portion of your electricity bill comes from oil, gas, and coal. Yeah, take a look here. Yeah, take a look here. Most of the electricity in the U.S., about 40%, is produced by burning natural gas, the cost of which spiked to a 14-year high last fall before dropping in 2023. A lot of utilities buy natural gas in the fall, and they try to spread it out over time so consumers don't, don't get hit with a large bill right away. Consumers look at gasoline, and they say, well, gasoline's come down. Why am I still paying more money for heat? But gasoline is now back back up. I mean, four near four dollars or over four dollars, depending on your state. Utilities are rebuilding their grids, which is very expensive. Large parts of the grids were built decades ago and are in need of replacement. A lot of the transmission facilities are sixty percent. In fact, when we go to the EIA here, uh. Major components of the U.S. Uh, average price of electricity, 61% of your electricity bill is generation, 26% of it is distribution, and 12% of it is transmission. Yeah, so a lot of your electricity bill is actually generation, distribution of it, and transmission. My wife quoted uh, the, that's from Armageddon, right? Yeah. Russian component, all, all made in Taiwan. That, that, quote, that quote when they're up in the space station, right? And he's, and he's banging it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let me know if you know that quote here. But uh, yeah, I mean, the thing is, is that gas prices and electricity prices are all going to go up. Um but if you look into the price of electric cars, it, it is cheaper to charge, and, and you can charge at home. It's convenient. I'm not really for either one. You guys can all make your own choices. I don't have an electric car at this point. Um, it is what it is. Make your own personal choice. I don't care. It's up to you. Um, but uh, no matter what, we need more um, power one way or another. Uh we we need more power. So let me know your thoughts here in the comments. I'll keep you up to date. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe down below. Click the bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. It's completely free to do so. New videos come out here every day, 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for liking and sharing these videos. Click here to see the new mandates and vaccines that are coming out here. That's right. Or you can click here to see what Walmarts are doing around the country, which is crazy. Click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.